Anybody who follows my Facebook or Twitter and has paid even the slightest bit of attention to it, which I doubt many people have, um, will know that I went to see uh, Christina yesterday uh, at the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, it was a one night only performance um, and it was just the the singers, like <clears throat> I suppose similar to the Chess in Concert thing where they didn't actually perform the play but they, um, that they sang the songs basically and um, they gave you a little bit of a clue as to what the, what the play was about but the full theatrical thing is hopefully going to be uh, put on at some point in the future. So it's that sort of experience really and this video is just a brief report on uh, my experiences there really. Right, the, um, the, the main people who, who, who starred in it were Helen Joholm who played Christina Louise Petra, who played Ulrika, who is a whore in the, um, in, in the plot. Uh, Russell Watson, who played Carl Oscar, who is uh, Christina's husband. And Kevin Odekirk, who plays Carl Oscar's brother. Now, for me, um, Russell Watson, uh, although I suppose really the big name there, uh, as far as British audiences go anyway, he did not steal the show. He had a lovely voice, sang beautifully, whatever, but didn't steal the show. Um, Helen Hjerholm uh, did uh, You Have to Be There towards the end of the show. Um, in, in the storyline, Christina suffers a miscarriage and this is what um, she uh, sings after the miscarriage. And it was so full of emotion. Now, I see, I don't know this play very well because I haven't got any other recordings of it. The first thing I heard of it really was last night, apart from um, I've heard You Have To Be There on the radio and Rudolph, I think, put it up on YouTube as well as a few other people have put it up on YouTube and I've heard it there two or three times. So, um, so when Helen Yerholm sang You Have To Be There, it absolutely brought the house down. She had you know, a standing ovation, which I think was just going to go on and on and on forever. And I felt a bit sorry for the conductor who raised his arms at one point to begin the next song and really couldn't because everyone was getting up and, you know, stamping their feet and just really having, you know, a, a great time applauding her, really. And I think she lapped up every moment of it. Um, that was her big number. And although, again, like Russell Watson, she sang brilliantly. That was that was the thing that she was saving herself for. And, you know, she really gave her absolutely every ounce of emotion that she possibly could. Um, and nowhere else in the in the performance did I feel that she was really giving that. And um, the person that was the most consistent in terms of um, being an emotional singer and actually portraying the events of the play uh, was uh, Kevin Odekirk, who, as I said, played uh, the younger brother. Um, he died um, uh, towards the beginning of the second act. Um, so that was a bit of a shame, really, uh, because, again, he had just brought the house down with one of his songs. Old Can Turn to Sand. That's the one, yeah. Um, he really gave that just about everything he could. That's really the positives about it is it's a huge positive really because you're sat there for the best part of three hours and you're just in through okay so any negatives that i'm going to be talking about i'll try and gloss over they're blemishes rather than terrible stains that you can't get out um firstly the the sound was slightly biased in favor of the orchestra um the the, the singers were mic'd up um I don't think that a lot of the orchestra was, to be honest. Um, at least the orchestra had a very natural sound about it um, that that really didn't sound as if it was co coming through any PA system. Regard, I mean, it, it may well have just been an absolutely fantastic PA system there, and the orchestra possibly were coming through it, but they but they didn't sound like it. The singers obviously sounded like they were coming through microphones. Um, and even so, a lot of their lyrics were obscured by the orchestra and it's not something that I was noticing as an audiophile. It was something that I heard a fair few people um, in the interval talking about. Now, uh, a big positive <laughs> was the fact that Benny and Bjorn uh, did actually turn up for this and they 
uh, were given a, a, a thunderous round of applause as they went and sat down uh, before the show started. And uh, at the end of the show, uh, they came on and received a round of applause. Well, <laughs> a stampede of, appla of, of applause um, when they turned up. Um, and it, it was lovely. Uh, it was a shame then that they didn't say anything, you know, uh, just thanked everyone for coming and, you know, thanked the orchestra and the performers. Um, the orchestra did a wonderful job, by the way. I mean, it was just lovely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, well done for t turning up. You could have spoken. <laughs> it, it seemed very casual, I suppose, at the end. I mean, they, you know, they, they didn't bow or anything like that. They just, uh, they just sort of came on, um, shook hands with the, um, with with the performers. Uh, Benny sort of uh, did a gesture like that to point to the orchestra um, and that was it really and then off they trundled um, yeah and, and they stood there looking a bit like sort of wet fish I suppose uh, bouquets were given out to the performers but poor Helen Kjerholm didn't get one um, she's probably now in a dressing room somewhere having a lovely strop about that um, but at least it looked, it was my mum who noticed this actually, and at least it looked like um, that was what she was, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's what happened. Um, whether or not she did get one or not, I don't know, but certainly uh, it didn't look like it from where we were sitting. So if anybody else saw it, then, and, and you can tell me any different, then uh, I would like to think that, that poor Helen Kjerholm wasn't being sort of left out of the proceedings, because she did sing marvellously. Um, now, um, the other, I suppose, big gripe that I, that I have about the whole experience, really, was the Albert Hall. It's a wonderful place, and people, please try and go there. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, if you're in London, it's one thing that, you know, in your life, you, you must do, because it's, it's a beautiful area of London. It's full of history, but... Um, if you go there, don't expect to be able to sit down anywhere, okay? Unless you have oodles of money, which I can assure you I don't have, um, but unless you have oodles of money, um, you know, just sitting down and getting somewhere, something to eat and drink is difficult, you know? Um, after sort of going up and down lifts here, there and everywhere, trying to find somewhere to sit down, we ended up... Um, um, somewhere on the first floor uh, at a bar called the Champagne Bar um, where I thought that the bar staff were actually quite rude one of them whipped away a menu that I was actually reading there um, and uh, I thought that was you know, rather impolite but you know, the woman was just in a hurry you know, tr trying to serve someone um, and uh, yeah, horrifically expensive and we ended up sitting on the stairs, you know, we ended up with a round of three drinks um, and, you know, a few snacks, basically crispy things. Um, and it came to £25, which is, you know, to me, absolutely ludicrous. The programmes were £10, you know, and if you wanted anything better than that, then you had to, like, book the whole experience of, you know... Um, I mean, they had tables behind curtains in the actual auditorium where you could eat and then go and sit down and and whatever and I'm sure that costs an absolute fortune and it's out of reach of most people if you just want to go and sit in the Albert Hall you can't do that because unless you want to um, you know, unless you've got a ticket you can't get to any of the bars or cafes um, and, and, and that's a, a, I think a shame because young people students and what have you you know they want to come down there and just enjoy the experience of being there and that would you know I'm sure um, create a positive thing where you'd actually get more people coming in to see plays and stuff like that. Um, it would be a shame really, it's, it's, it's keeping the, the theatre in, the, um, in, in the realms of the, of the privileged and not bringing it down to just ordinary folk. So, um, you know, lovely show and everything, but please Albert Hall, try and make the experience a bit more welcoming. Give us somewhere to sit, given that there are thousands of people, you know, in the auditorium, somewhere to sit and have a drink and maybe meet friends and, and that sort of thing would be quite nice. Okay, moan over and lovely anyway. Bye.